of blind babies have an Easter egg hunt. And we went up to the theater, and the owner of the theater was with us. And as we walked in the door, the fire alarms were going off. It was beeping, and the whole building's beeping. And I thought, this is an embarrassing moment for this woman because, because of the noise, and that apparently no one was able to turn it off. And we began the program, and it's beeping. And then the director of the blind babies explained that we were about to begin the hunt. Because how blind babies had an Easter egg hunt is they did it by sound. And the eggs were hidden all throughout the theater. And they went and, and did a hunt just like any other child would have done, except for they found it because the, the egg was beating. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a, a moment for us where we, we learned something that we didn't know. We took something away. that They lived the same lives as the rest of us were. They simply adjusted according to their own skill set. And, and it was very emotional and moving to us. The world is changing faster than ever before. And the key thing for all of us is don't be a victim. It's not our circumstances we can't control. But the other part of our life is in our head and we can control our response. So it's not just Zimbabwe that needs to hear it, it's the whole world. And um, I've spoken in, this is my eighth country in the last two weeks that I've spoken in. Traveled over 30,000 miles this year so far. It's a common thing, you know. You guys in Barbados might think, you know, you've got unique problems. No, good news, it's global. No matter where you go, it's a common thing. If only we worked in a different company, country, blah, blah, no. You can't get away unless you go to Mars. It's, it's global. Our quality of life, so many people are victims. They think that to be happy, you've got to have nice things happening around you. When I went blind, I thought, you know, God, what have I done to deserve going blind? I thought I couldn't be successful or happy until my circumstances changed. And my brother was the one who said, you're wasting your life. The trouble with you is your attitude. So all I've changed to revolutionize my quality of life is my attitude. I start with what I want to achieve in life, not the problem. So blind people can't fly, but I used to think, you know, Virgin happened to be truly on my favorite airline. I go on the way to go with Virgin, and I thought all of their pilots, to, to qualify as a commercial pilot, you've got to learn to fly blind on instrument. I thought, I'm not qualified, I'm blind, you know? <laughs> so uh, the big thing is start with your dreams, what you want to achieve in life, don't solve the problems. Now I think, I'm going to be a drag racer, make that decision, then I think, whoops, how can a blind man be a drag racer? It's very different from thinking, I'm blind, blind people can't do anything. So, to you beautiful people here in Barbados, stop thinking about, you know, the current situation, forget about that, think about what you want to do, start with that and then work backwards like a map, start with a destination, that's what has transformed my life. Have me back to Zimbabwe, but they're not the only people who need help, the world needs help. Eighty percent of all the executives I speak to around the world, unhappy. They stressed, overworked, bad, you know, life work balance. And I say, are you happy? No. Well, what are you doing? You're investing the best years of your life into something that doesn't make you happy. Oh, we want to be successful. So if success doesn't equal happiness and fulfillment in your personal life, you guys are idiots. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, change your job or change your attitude. So we all need to hear that message, not just Zimbabwe. I learned I was going blind. I lost my confidence, my dignity, my independence. And it was only at the age of 50 that really my key role model was my brother Jeffrey, also totally blind. He was then living in Durban in South Africa. He built a 32-foot ocean-going yacht by field in his back garden. If you want a stupid hobby for a blind man, it's building a boat in the garden, you know? <laughs> what did they think he was? No, or something. Anyway, he launched it and it actually floats. And people say, oh, bless, it hasn't sunk yet, it's still floating. What are you going to do with it? He said, I'm going to sail it solo from Africa to Australia. Totally blind, totally alone. 53 days in the Southern Ocean, five days in the Force 10 gale, blowing him half wrecked towards Antarctica. People said, it's impossible. You're not just a blind man. You're a stupid blind man for wanting to do that. And he said, no, it's not impossible. It's just never been done before. And I guess through Variety International, there are thousands of children around the world who are doing things that people thought were impossible, but they had the support and help. So I suppose I'm here saying to the beautiful people in Barbados, but also around the world, everyone needs a chance. My little business card has a photograph of me at the bottom of the Red Sea, pushing a friend of mine who's paralyzed from the chest down, no legs. I'm pushing him in his wheelchair along the bottom of the Red Sea using my white stick to find the way, you know? And uh, people say, why do you do that? Well, I read in the Bible about you know, Moses, stick over the, the Red Sea and in parting, didn't work, find an alternative, hold your breath and go along the bottom. Anyway, but the importance is this, 
people think, in, certainly in the UK where I live now, that disability is a barrier, it's a handicap, it's a bad thing. In the photograph, there's a person blind as a bat, me, and a chap stuck in a wheelchair, paralyzed, having the time of their life. So quality of life isn't based on what happens to you, it's based on what you do with what happens to you. And you know, I said to my mum the other day, I'm so glad I wasn't conceived only recently, because with all of this genetic testing, I probably would have gone down the plug. Oh well, you won't be perfect, disability is bad, why bring a baby into the world who isn't perfect? But my quality of life is not based on my blindness. My blindness doesn't lower my quality of life at all. More happy, more fulfilled and more successful as a blind man. I'm happier now as a blind man than when I could see. And the only change has been five inches between my ears. From here to here, I've changed my attitude. And I think the big message with Variety International to all the people in the world and here in Barbados, please be generous. Give other people a chance. If people didn't give me a chance, I would have been stuck at home now. No quality of life, no confidence, no independence. What's turned my life around are beautiful people like Variety International gave me a chance. And now I'm having the time of my life. And I realize that the only limits in my life are those I accept myself. The same message for all of you and the people of Barbados. No matter what's going on in this island, it's, uh, it's up to you. You can't control the weather out there, but you can control in your head your response to it. Blind. You know, I want to be a pilot. And I thought, all I need, that information that blind, that sighted people have, they look at their flight instruments, and they can fly on the instrument. I thought, well, my eyes don't work, but my ears are okay. All I need is that information coming into my ears instead of my eyes. What a simple concept. So all I needed was flight instruments for blind pilots. And I found Googling, nobody in the world was making flight instruments for blind pilots. I mean, what a niche market no one had thought of. So, but it's, it's not a difficult solution, just thinking differently. And I think so much in life, if we just let go of, you know, the way we've always done it in the past and think differently. And, and Variety Club is such a beautiful example of people thinking out of the box and all we need is a chance, you know, I had a chance in life, and as I said, I'm a living example of how my life is, I can't believe how happy I am, as I said earlier on the radio, if I was a cat, I'd be purring, I'm so happy, and 